Good morning. I thought I would change up my background for the Chapter B lectures just to not be too predictable. So we're going to start talking about rhythm and meter, and I'm going to go through uh, the whole of Chapter B in a total of five lectures. The first lecture will talk about the actual symbols for different durations of notes and rests. If you have your textbook, it would be helpful for you to turn to chap chapter B and look at example B.1B, which shows the symbols for notes and rests of different durations. You may want to actually jot some notes down in, in your book as we're going. Uh, I will be showing you this example on my own screen. So if you don't have your books, that's okay. In example B.1B, we are shown a number of durations for notes and rests. The shorter note values are all shown as single notes with flags. So if you look at this little picture here that I've drawn you, uh, this is an eighth, a single eighth note, and the fact that it has one flag means that it is an eighth note. If, it, if there were two flags, it would be a sixteenth note, three flags, a thirty-second note. The more flags, the shorter the note. When you have two or more eighth notes, they can be written without a flag, but instead being connected by a thick horizontal line or a nearly horizontal line that's called a beam. When there's a single beam, uh, it shows eighth notes, two beams would indicate 16th notes, three beams, 32nd notes, etc. Okay, so let's take a look at example B.1B. This shows you some basic durational symbols. Let's take a look at example B.1b. This table shows you basic durational symbols. The left column shows, gives you the name of the duration, then we show you the note, and then the rest equivalent. These should be familiar to you. The two that are or two or three that are maybe not familiar to you would be the very first one, which shows a the very first one, which shows a long duration that's equal to two whole notes. This is called a breve, and it's it is a double whole note. The breve symbol often looks like a whole note with either one line on each side or a pair of lines on each side. Sometimes the middle. Uh, figure instead of being a whole note is kind of a square whole note. But that is equal to eight quarter notes or a whole note plus a whole note. The equivalent rest is a vertical rectangle that fills in the entire space between the middle line and the next line up. And so that brief rest is equal to a whole rest plus a whole rest. Um, you would see this this symbol perhaps if you were in 4-2 time, which is not commonly used. Some of you who play in orchestras and who've read older music might remember seeing this rest used when you have a multi-measure rest and you have a multi-measure rest, for instance, for two whole note uh, measures, it could be shown as a breathe. The shorter durations down at the bottom of the table may also be less familiar with you. I'm sure that you're used to seeing eighth notes and sixteenth notes, but probably not so much used to seeing thirty-second notes, thirty-second rests, and sixty-fourth notes, and sixty-fourth rests, but these exist. Let me say a couple of things about the whole and the half rest symbols. These are rectangles that sit in the fourth space of the staff. Okay, so when, when you're writing a whole rest or a half rest in the staff, you should write it just as a rectangle, either hanging down from the fourth line or sitting on top of the middle line. When we're writing it just uh, on its own in a text or something, like in this table, we have to show a little piece of the staff line to indicate whether it is a whole rest or a half rest. 
So the whole rest is shown as a rectangle with just a little piece of the fourth line above it to show that it is a whole rest. Or the half rest would be shown as a line with a rectangle above it, uh, looking sort of like a little hat, and that shows that it's a half rest. That little horizontal line represents the middle line of the staff. So if you're writing these on a staff, don't write that little line. You don't need it because it's already there. You have a staff. These are not the only durations that occur in music. We can also use dotted notes to show uh, increased length of the same basic note durations. We can also use dotted rests, although usually instead of showing, for instance, a dotted quarter rest, we would simply show a quarter rest followed by an eighth rest. There are specific times when it's notationally appropriate to use a dotted rest, but most of the time it's not appropriate. The duration of a note can be increased by 50% by adding a dot to it. So if you look at example B.2, which I have on the screen here, uh, you can see that when you have a whole note, that duration is equivalent to having a whole note tied to a half note. It's the note plus half again the note. So the dotted whole note is equal to three half notes in length or six quarter notes. And the other dotted values work the same way. Whatever the original note value is, think of that note being tied to half its value or increased in duration by half. Uh, I've given you the mathematical equation here that a dotted note is equal to the original note plus half of that same original note. In other words, it's equal to one and a half times the original note duration. When we add a second dot to the note, we are, it's as if we're adding a dot to the second duration. So a whole note followed by two dots is equal to a whole note tied to half of its value, and then that note, the half note being tied to half of its value, the quarter note. In other words, a double dotted note is equal to the note value plus half of itself plus a quarter of itself. In other words, it's equal to one and three quarters times the original note value. Yes, there is such a thing as a triple dotted note, even a quadruple dotted note, but we will probably never see those in this class. The, this diagram shows the use of ties to combine two shorter durations into one longer duration. And that can be done really with any two durations. Let me just tell you a couple of things about ties that are important to note. One thing is that ties go on the note head side of the note unless there are two independent melodies on the same staff. So if, if you had a, a stem up melody for the sopranos and then a stem down melody for the altos sharing the same uh, treble staff, the ties would go on the stem side of both of those lines. But usually they connect uh, the note head to the next note head, but, not, but they don't quite touch the note head. There's just a little space there. Ties are not the same as slurs. Don't confuse these two symbols, even though they look similar. Slurs are articulations that mean to play the notes in a smooth, connected, legato way. So they mean something different. And a final note, one tie can only connect a note to the next note. Sorry, the next note, not the nest note. In order to tie three notes together, you need two ties. So if you look at the double dotted side of the chart. If we're going to tie an eighth note to a 16th note to a 32nd note, we can't just use one big curved line to go over the whole thing. We have to use two smaller ties. This is another way that ties are different from slurs. Slurs can connect a number of uh, notes together, a large 
number of notes that are to be played smoothly. The dots and the double dots are used frequently in music so that instead of having a continuous pattern of notes that are the same duration, we can alternate between short and long notes. And the more dots there are, the greater the contrast between the long and the short notes. Compare the sound of these three rhythms. Letter A is continuous quarter notes. So it would be something like ta, 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 ta. By lengthening the quarter note and then shortening the second and the fourth note, we get a long, short, long, short pattern like this. Ta, 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 ta. And by using a double dot and then shortening the remaining note even more, we get a, a really snappy sort of a pattern. Ta, 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 ta like that. At this point, you should be able to do exercises one, two, and three from the worksheet at the end of the textbook chapter. These three exercises are all on page 35, and they're due for the next class period. Exercise one gives you a, a sort of mathematical equation where it tells you either that a single note of some duration is equal to, and then you have to fill in an a number on the blank to say how many quarter notes a whole note would be equal to. Okay, so if I were you, I would do this step by step. I would first think about two quarter notes, that would be equal to a half note, and then two half notes are equal to a whole note. So in other words, two times two quarter notes equal a whole note, and that would mean putting the number four on the blank. On the other side, you need to do these rest problems. Uh, a certain number of a particular rest duration is equal to a particular number of some other rest duration. Okay, so here, a certain number of eighth rests will be equal to one half rest. Okay, one half rest is two quarter rests and therefore it's four eighth rests. So again, you'd want to put the number four here on the line. Okay, uh, your book has the complete instructions. I sort of cut the instructions off when I copied this onto my handout. For each of the following patterns, write the equivalent duration with one note. And that could be either a regular note with no dot, or it might be a dotted note. So uh, use the, try to use a single note duration with or without a dot to show what would happen if you combined these two shorter notes into a single duration, or these three shorter notes into a single duration. And then finally, exercise three asks you to rewrite the dotted note or double dotted note to show that it's equal to an original note tied to half its value or an original note tied to half its value tied to a quarter of its value. You can always, for this exercise, refer back to example B.2. That's all for this lecture. Go ahead and do the homework. Send me an email if you have questions or bring up the questions in class.